The first World Cup semi-final pitches Didier Deschamps' France against the Belgium of Roberto Martinez. France have stuck largely with their 4-2-3-1, though this has an asymmetrical quality, with either Blaise Matuidi or Corentin Tolisso playing on the left-hand side at the attacking midfield three. Kylian Mbappe is the danger man, while France's fullbacks push high, especially Benjamin Pavard on the right, into the space left by Mbappe, while Angolo Kante covers and Paul Pogba drives forwards from a deep midfield role. Belgium have used a 3-4-2-1, and against Brazil, a 4-3-3 in defence, which moved to a 3-4-3 in possession. Normally, the back three is flanked by wing-backs Thomas Mounier and Yannick Carrasco, while Romelu Lukaku leads the line ahead of Dries Mertens and Aiden Hazard. Kevin De Bruyne pulls the strings from a deep midfield position, but against Brazil, De Bruyne played as a false nine, flanked by Lukaku and Hazard, ahead of a midfield three. This allowed Belgium to target Brazil's left flank and set up one-on-ones when countering. Because Lucas Hernandez is less of an attacking outlet than Marcelo, Lukaku is unlikely to play on the right again. De Bruyne might play higher though with Hazard. While France's team shape and selection is unlikely to spring a surprise, Belgium's still could. Both teams have decisions to make and areas that they can target. Romelu Lukaku has been superb so far this tournament. As well as scoring four goals, his all-round contribution has been immense, aware and intelligent in his link-up play. He may fancy his chances against Rafael Varane and Samuel Umtiti. Varane is a quick and elegant defender, but Lukaku can push him physically. Umtiti can be a little rash, pushing forwards, and if Belgium can drop players into the space in front of him, Lukaku could exploit any gaps that appear. He is unlikely to start on the right again, but he could drift out there to target the space between Hernandez and Umtiti. Marouane Fellaini started against Brazil on the right of a midfield three in defence, tucking inside when Belgium pushed forwards in possession to allow Thomas Mounier to overlap. His aerial ability is well known, and indeed Fellaini often looks his best, as against England, as a kind of attacking midfielder. From here, he can push up late, unsettle the build-up from deep by man-marking the defensive midfielder, and act as an outball for long passes. Against Kante especially, this could work well. France do have other means of transitioning, but Fellaini pushed high would be a handful. It also allows Belgium a second target for long passes against the French press, which could be vital in relieving the defence. Belgium have had issues down the left-hand side. Yannick Carrasco is not a natural wing-back, and this has meant that either Jan Vertonghen is caught trying to mark a huge swathe of space out wide, or the opposition get a free run down in behind Carrasco. This was solved in part by Martinez when he switched to a back four against Brazil, but Vertonghen is not a natural left-back either, and tucked in when Belgium had the ball. Either way, France's Kylian Mbappe and Benjamin Pavard will be looking forward to Belgium's left-hand side. They're both quick and interchange intelligently, with Mbappe cutting in or pushing up, and Pavard overlapping as well. Martinez could counter by going to a back four again, but France will still scent weakness on that side. Olivier Giroud did not start France's first game this tournament, but he's become an integral part of the system since then. His ability to link play means that whoever marks him, either Vincent Kompany or Toby Alderweireld, will need to stop him bringing France's quicker players into the game. Stepping ahead could work, as Giroud isn't the quickest, but he is a wily and experienced player and could win free kicks from an aggressive defender. Belgium's best bet is to stop the ball getting to him at all, but they neither excel at defending crosses nor stopping quick vertical passes from deep. They could push high and deny space to France altogether, but then they have to watch Mbappe breaking the line. Giroud poses so many questions of defenders, it's a wonder that he's still underrated in some quarters. Two sides who've looked exceptional at times in attack, but who've also offered chances to their opponents. This semi-final will come down to who can exploit those weaknesses more clinically.